the RGB has some serious special sauce. This one is their top of the line, I do believe, and it sounds like it. I find zero faults. Zero. I loved everything that came across musically. There's not too many sets where I would say, is it worth the ask, the asking price? And, and, and it's 3K. I'd say yes. I got it. I, I gelled with this set. Uh, and it came to the realization that... Um, I haven't heard a bad song on this set. Hello. How many of you said hello back? You should have. It's been a very Canadian thing to do anyway. <laughs> Fired up for this one. And I should be. This is the Tanzio Mirai RGB. I heard a little bit about this. It's not going to be mainstream because it's $2,999, so it's not pocket lent up there with the kilo bucks. Now, I just came off of the Tanzio Mirai Halo, and I was, I actually like that set, but I thought it was missing a little mm, something. It just um, it was missing something. It sounded very smooth and natural and wonderful and kickbackish, um, but it was missing something. Now, the RGB. <laughs> Get ready for this. 17 drivers per side. Yes, I counted. Nine balanced armatures. Eight E-STAT drivers. I've never heard of another IM with eight EST drivers. I'm going to try and curb my enthusiasm as much. It's a wonderful set. <laughs> Thank you for the loan. You knew who you are. It's one of these IMs, firstly, that I think gives true flagship sound. There's only been a few that I've ever listened to that I think do that. Uh, single DDs, for me, is the uh, Soft Ears Twilight. Uh, but we go up from there. Fat Frequency Grand Maestro. Absolutely. Totally up there. It is their top of the line. Sounds like it. This one is their top of the line, I do believe, and it sounds like it. I find zero faults. Zero. And I think I'm pretty critical lately. And uh, I find zero faults with this set. Um, first of all, I will tell you that I love this 8 EST implementation that they have done. It, it With ESTs, the way they're supposed to be used is to add in the extra pizzazz in the very, very top end to add that shimmer, that gleam, that extra little bit of energy uh, into stuff like hi-hats and cymbals and just to give it a little bit of an extra information edge. Um, I wrote to give it that extra diamond-like sparkle up top and it really does it well. Probably, 
it's 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 I call this one the sneaky EST because there is a lot of EST information, but it's so well done and so well blended into the overall tuning um, that it's not something that stands out per se, but something that is just in there in the melting pot of music. Let's talk about the bass. Now, this is all electrostatics. There's no dynamic drivers in this set. Um, probably some of the best BA bass I've ever heard. Textured, right? Which is one of my criticisms about balanced armature basses. I find that they don't have, they lack texture and the, the attack and the release and uh, uh, when you Hawkman Kim's drums, okay? That entire 10 minutes is fantastic. The, it, it, it conveys it in a way that was realistic. Um, it is, the bass on this set is uniquely tuned as well. I gotta say that it has enough of the weight added in and the bass added in for instrumentals to sound correct, for vocals to sound bang on, um, but not too much to, again, to, to distract you from the overall tuning. Um, and I hope I can convey how I think this set sounds to you. And if I'm struggling, um, again, it's one of these sets that you stick in your ears and really hard to actually critically listen because you're just uh, drifted away into the music. So, uh, but let's now talk about the meds. Uh, it really has, uh, just like the Halo, kind of an effortless, smooth quality. One of the things I said about the Halo was that it was using the uh, Knowles for mids and the Sonians for the highs. This set does the same thing. Uh, but somehow with the extra tuning, or this tuning, and the extra energy up top, it works. Uh, much better than the halo did for me um now at one point i said mid bass could have had a bit more impact but as i kept listening to this um this i am uh, one thing i noticed is it it's a very resolving set as well so it doesn't add any coloration to the mid bass so if there's a track i was just listening to 21 guns uh from green day and the mid bass and the guitars and the and the drums were fabulous and and it was like what are you talking about those mid bass and that's hits sound terrific they're there in the quantity that the recording put in not uh extra coloration and that's kind of the difference. It's a non-colored mid-bass. It's there in the mix, but not added in extra. Um, overall, uh, the the mids present very cleanly, um, uncolored. Mid-bass um, presentation from the from the lower mids all the way up into the upper mids are very very neutral sounding. Um, they're not forward, they're definitely not recessed, and tonally balanced. So they're not warm, and they're not airy and dry. So bravo for doing that. But yet this set leans towards more a musical set um, in its heart. Now we get into the highs. And again... Very well done. Uh, very good detail. Um, dynamics. Uh, enough micro dynamics to stir an emotional response from you. Or at least you should. Right? Um, the highs are very supportive of the mids and like the bass does, um, but isn't distracting. So it's. It has all the information up there, but it's never to a point where it's like, wow, that was that was too much or that added too much. Um, 
at any one time. And that probably had to do now with the Sanyan um, BAs for the highs. They are, I find Sanyan BAs smoother than Knolls, and sometimes I like one over the other, depends on what I'm, I'm thinking about, I want to achieve in the sound profile. So, but uh, I find the highs never overstep anything. Uh, and they're there, and they give you all the details and the information, strings, uh, violin, um, wonderful. Um, now, the stage. The more, again, the more I listen to this set, and sometimes when you talk about stage and depth perception, uh, some people like the presentations where it's very 3D, where you hear all kinds of things going on in front of you, behind you, right? And I find I don't gravitate to that as much because it pulls my limited brain capacity away from what I'm trying to focus on, which is what the track is trying to focus on in the music. And uh, with the RGB, I found that... Uh, and this is kind of my favorite stage where it plays intimately inside of your headspace, not terribly outside and not terribly massively wide. It's not six feet out of your headspace um, and not crazy 3D. It, it's, it's enough to keep you engaged um, in the center presentation. And But this is the thing about this kind of performing this kind of level of performance okay so not only does it uh present that way but instrumental so if there's something going on left or something going on right height depth wise whatever it will it will send that information there there's a guitar playing left you can clearly hear it's separate from the singers vocals whatever uh piano center stage and then same thing is right it plays in its own 3d space um and uh, can project a really good sense of height and depth to follow the track when called upon again um not too many ims can pull that off and the rgb is definitely one of them that can uh it is certainly resolving enough to pick up all the micro details of the source and you can also tell sets that are more resolving than other sets because um, when you change sources, you're changing from like a Shanling M8, which is a bit warmer. And uh, say I were to use my desktop sack, the J the Shelly J2 and uh, topping. Um, I also, and I'll talk about this in a, in a, in a little bit. Um, and then I also tried it uh, off of this was the little... Sim got do 4x. You could clearly hear the different characteristics of the source, and that's how resolving the set is. So it would sound warmer on this, it uh, sounded more analytical on the desktop stack, and it shocked me how good of synergy it played with this little dongle that I'm testing out. Um, I, I didn't mean to actually, you know what? I meant to actually throw this little dongle on a resolving set to hear th the source, um, where I tried to anyway. And yes, you could clearly hear the the little SimGot dongle here. It plays just slightly warm. Um, it's a good little piece. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about that one on this one. But, you know, I should also shout out in this configuration i did talk a little bit about um sources and stuff like that so yes my final listening was done on this little 90 dollar dongle um because it really had just some good synergy with the rgb uh also uh i'm using the nice hck dragon scale cable now well it just looks phenomenal on it and i didn't i didn't cable roll sometimes when you put a cable on 
and it just clicks with this I am. Uh, that's what this Dragon Scale from Nice HCK did for me on the RGB Halo. This I am deserves a good cable. This is not a cheap cable, um, but it sounds wonderful with this I am for me. Um, like if this was my set, this cable would be permanently attached never to be disconnected to the set because I'd be listening to this all the time and had to make sure that my cable would be available. Right. Um, let us just talk about a couple tracks and just a few. Uh, like An Alien and Me by Joe Satriani. And I'm going to talk about this particular not so much track because this is how the session went for me. Um, one of the most electrifying, enjoy enjoyable replays ever. I love electric guitar on this set. And then went from that song to another Joe Satriani song. And I was listening, um, all my friends are here. So I also, I know this track very, very well. Um, there's an ascending A major rift that Joe plays in here. And with the RGB, did it so masterfully done. Probably one of the best presentations I have heard where you could clearly pick out the ascending A major notes as he's dropping them on his guitar. Uh, that is not easy to do. Um, not too many sets I've ever listened to at any price point did it. And then I went through probably another two hours of Joe Satriani just because I love the way the electric guitar and his guitar sounded on this set. Then I had another session today, a long one, and I was in a mood for jazz. So it was Oscar Peterson. It was Pancho Sanchez. It was Lee Morgan. I was playing the Sidewinder and I was writing down stuff. I was trying to anyway. Um, and it was such a wonderful replay of jazz. And that's where I kind of, it, it just asserted to me, uh, I got it. I, I gelled with this set. Uh, and it came to the realization that um, I haven't heard a bad song on this set. Um, I loved everything that came across musically, um, the way it presented. So... Don't, don't that happen very often? Uh, not for me. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. Honestly, I was kind of ex expecting, a. I don't know what I was expecting, maybe a bit of a letdown uh, after the Halo. Um, but I really like this set. I wish this was my set. <laughs> you know, there's not too many sets where I would say, is it worth the ask? The asking price and, and and it's 3k i'd say yes there's some sets i listen to kilobuck sets that i listen to and i go mm, you know what if i paid three grand for that set i don't think i'd be happy if you i think if you paid three grand for this set you'd be well if you like this kind of how it presents you'd be smiles and chuckles till the rainbow ends so um the RGB, you know, some sets come across as just music, right? Uh, some come across as analytical. Uh, EJ07, for me, it's not musical. It's very analytical, 3D-ish. I can't really enjoy it. Um, ISN H50, wonderful set. It's very, very musical but not very analytical. It's, it didn't do that balance. And then there's just some sets that just saying, sound plain bad. This set is neither or either of those or any of those. The RGB has some special sauce. To pull off resolving, analytical, um, it's that side of the musical details. Well, never, ever 
for a split second, letting go of its smooth musical heart. And to me, that is the RGB. And my session I've had with this, it's been a joy and a pleasure listening to this set. And I'm so grateful to getting to have a chance to share what I heard uh, with this. I haven't seen any other reviews. I haven't read anything um, about this set, to tell you the truth. Um, and I'm pleasantly shocked and happy. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. This is the monk. I'm out for now. <laughs>